The General Services Administration is on the hunt for a new smaller office space for the Social Security Administration. As the pandemic continues and employees work remotely, a smaller real estate footprint could be the way of the future. Dan Matthews is Commissioner of the Public Building Service at the General Services Administration. Dan, welcome. Thanks for coming on the program. SSA is not the only agency that's looking at at least new space, if not smaller space. The Justice Department signing some new deals recently. How are you seeing the virus and, and the way that employees are working today and potentially working years out affecting the way that the government's looking for space and using space? Great question. Thank you. And first, thank you for having me here today. Uh, it is a question that a lot of us are thinking about in the federal real estate. And I think the short answer is for some agencies, I think it's likely we will see some reductions going forward. But for others, particularly agencies that have significant classified work going on where telework doesn't really lend itself very well, we could see some expansions. So it's a, a little bit of a mixed bag in that respect. But for GSA, we've really been working hard to make sure that we are in the market, moving our projects forward on schedule, on budget. In many ways, uh, you know, this is as a real estate consumer, uh, this is a good market for, for the federal government to, to find value for the taxpayer and for our tenants. It's kind of counterintuitive, Dan, because I think in the first couple of months of the pandemic, the automatic assumption was, well, it will the, the workplace will look dramatically different moving forward and and people will want to work remotely and so a smaller footprint seemed automatic but it sounds like at least what you're getting at with the idea about the classified space might apply to unclassified spaces too where you want to have people come back to the office and maybe the 150 square foot per person rule that applied for a long time doesn't apply anymore. Maybe people want to be more spaced out. Maybe people want to be back in uh, cube environments so that they're a little more isolated from other people instead of the open environments that we had for a long time. Are, are there answers to some of these questions yet? Or are we still in the thinking about them stages as we try to understand what things will look like going forward? So it really depends on the agency. And, and their function and what they're trying to accomplish. If you think about here in the Washington DC area, right? We obviously have some pretty critical facilities that we operate for our tenants. Think operation centers and, and things that are, are, are you know, military facilities where people have to be there doing their work. And in those situations, we're really controlling for um, spread through reducing the density. And they may be sh uh, using different shifts to, to decrease the number of people in this space at any given time. But long term, I think the key is really going to be about flexibility. Uh, agencies have pivoted to a much larger telework footprint during this coronavirus. Uh, there's no question about that. And there is real value that agencies are learning through that process. They're modernizing their technology. They're, they're digitizing their work processes. So you're not tied to a file cabinet and, and, and physical paper files. That allows mobility. And it also allows um, the opportunity to uh, kind of cut that connection from an individual person and an individual desk. And that allows us to kind of extract that excess capacity from a real estate portfolio and really return value to the tenant and the taxpayer. Historically, Dan, has the role of PBS been more tactical or strategic in working with an agency? And do you expect that role to change over time as a result of the virus? It's a great question. I would say it was more tactical uh, if you go back, say, eight years ago or so. but. But really, during the Obama administration, actually, there was a more strategic approach about trying to find that value for the taxpayer and the tenant. Uh, clearly, there is excess capacity in the federal real estate portfolio. And so there's been a downward trend in the total consumption of, of real estate for the federal government for years now. And I think in many ways, overall, what we're learning in this massive kind of mandatory telework experience, we'll see a continuation of that trend, perhaps even an acceleration in some tenants but mitigating that will be other agencies, like I mentioned earlier, that may have a more uh, a work uh, activity going on that doesn't lend itself to telework, where they may want a little more distance, and we likely will be acquiring more space for those types of entities. You see it now in some of our procurements. For some agencies, we're looking at expansions at this point. How do you build elasticity into your inventory so that maybe the footprint needs to be smaller in the next 18 months, two years, three years, but maybe five, 10 years out, there are gains needed, people come back to the office or things start to look differently. How do you do that without moving a whole bunch of agencies around, especially if the market is not as favorable 
to the, the people looking for leases as the people trying to get space leased? Well, so we have a balance between government-owned real estate and private sector leases. In fact, right now it's about 50-50. Uh, and so we have flexibility in that respect with leases. When they expire, we can leave, depending on the terms that we get. Although what I would say right now in the market, in many of the markets we're in, leasing is on sale. It is a good time for the government to be securing longer term, firm term leases when we have a requirement that we know is going to extend out into the future. Uh, we're getting fabulous rates. Good, we, we hire the best brokers to negotiate deals on our behalf, and we are really getting tremendous uh, pricing. Uh, just uh, last year alone, we came in 12% on average below the midpoint of the market in all of our lease deals. Historically, we used to average about 3 to 5%. So we're getting really fabulous results. And we don't replace all of our leases you know, in one year. We have 100 million square feet of leases expiring over the next five years. So next year, we'll probably replace 20, 25% of those. And those requirements where we know we have a long-term need, we should go with a long firm term lease. If we're not sure that we've got a potential backfill tenant, if our if our agency that we're leasing for changes their, their operational posture and needs to give back space, well, in those situations, we might want a shorter term lease. But we, we you know, mitigate that risk on a, on a task, on a case-by-case -case basis. Dan Matthews, the Public Building Service, great to have you on the program. Thank you. Thank you. Great to be here.